Hey, what's up everyone? This is Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To, and it's not too often where we get to have fun and try to break things. And today is one of those days, and I've really been excited to uh, find the time to build up a new vSAN 7.0 Update 3 uh, stretch cluster. Uh, if you guys haven't heard as of yet, and I just posted a blog post today, vSAN 7.0 Update 3 has some really awesome new capabilities uh, from an availability standpoint uh, with stretch clusters. Now this also uh, extends into the two node stretch cluster as uh, really we all know if uh, the two node configuration is just simply a special stretch cluster. But what we uh, now have with vSAN 7.0 Update 3 is the ability to not only withstand the loss of a single site, we can also withstand the loss of that site being down as well as the witness node. Now that is something that I think all of us in the back of our minds with stretch clustering uh, when we were thinking about architecture design of this uh, stretch cluster configuration, especially for production environments, there's always that wor worry about the witness node. Uh, because, uh, and previously, and I had posted a blog about this as well, if you lose um, not only one site, but if you lose the witness node, you're running VMs such as this Linux test VM that I have running in this lab environment would immediately go down. Uh, and the reason for that is stretch clustering uh, traditionally relies on that witness node component or the witness component to have that majority to have quorum to say, okay, I can now uh, still maintain a running virtual machine. So what I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, today is the new functionality of stretch clustering. So what I have is a six node stretch cluster. And if I go to uh, look at my vSAN fault domains, uh, I'll just give you guys a quick look. I have a preferred cluster and a secondary cluster. So the preferred nodes are nodes one through three and then four th through six, <clears throat> excuse me, comprises the secondary uh, set of, or secondary site, I should say, of this stretch cluster. And then as you see, of course, to create the stretch cluster, you need the witness uh, host running for those witness components. Now, what I have here is a just a small VM uh, called Linux Test, and as you can see, it's running on SC ESX01 for Stretch Cluster ESX01 node. And as we can see, what I want to do, I'm going to bring up a uh, remote console just so we can see we can interact with the uh, VM. I get this guy pulled up. So as you can see, I can type around, I can bring up ifconfig, the cursor's blinking, we know the VM is live, it's, it's uh, you know, responding to input, so we know it's good. Uh, so we've got that VM running. So what I'm going to do now, we're gonna have some fun, is on my physical uh, vSphere environment, so this is a nested, all nested environment. On the physical environment, I have uh, a vApp, vSAN primary and a vApp vSAN secondary that houses the three respective nested ESXi uh, hosts uh, that are running in the stretch cluster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply power off. So with just a couple of clicks, now I have a disaster scenario where an entire site is now offline. So we're gonna keep refreshing here, but in just a few moments, and we already see some, some red bangs here to indicate something is not quite uh, as it should be. 
So as expected, nodes four through six are now saying, hey, something's wrong. And if we keep refreshing, we will see those guys go offline here shortly. So once again, while that is kind of thinking about the state there, as expected, this is the same as it was in previous stretch cluster configurations. Uh, you know, I still have node majority. I, you know, have the witness host online. Um, and I have the three hosts that comprise my uh, primary uh, site uh, of the preferred location in the stretch cluster. So now, as expected, we see the telltale sign that something is uh, tragically wrong in that particular site. We've got three nodes down, but again, we can still get to the VM. Now what I'm going to do, uh, let's have some more fun is we are going to do something catastrophic now. So we are in a situation where we have an entire site down, but what I'm going to now do is I am going to power slam the witness node. <laughs> so uh, I'm not even gonna shut it down. I'm just gonna say power off. So we're gonna see the power indicator go off and let's go back to our nested uh, vCenter environment. And as you can see, the vSAN cluster, it's in a state of, hey, something's not quite right. We've got three nodes that are not responding. And if we just wait a little bit longer, uh, what we'll see is some problems ensue with the witness node. Let's bring this in where you guys can see. Yeah, so we definitely, definitely have pings failing. And as expected, now we get the not responding. So this is what is new, guys. Uh, take a look at this VM. We are in a situation where previously we would have lost this stretch cluster. This workload would not have been able to run in previous stretch cluster uh, versions prior to vSAN 7.0 update 3. So as you can see, this is a really fantastic new capability that our local to the preferred location VMs uh, are still running. We still have the ability to have workloads uh, you know, receiving traffic. They are responsive. Uh, no issues with this particular uh, portion of the stretch cluster. So really great new uh, functionality there. Uh, so a lot of fun to simulate these disasters, especially in the lab scenario. Uh, really the only time it is fun uh, to do that. Uh, but one thing to mention, this new uh, capability to withstand additional failures, uh, mentioned the two node cluster uh, earlier. So now with two node, if you have at least three disk groups, you can lose uh, the witness node, you can lose an entire host, so one of the two hosts, and then you can also lose one of the disk groups. So imagine the failures that you're able to withstand and still have full availability uh, to your workloads. Outstanding. And applaud VMware for um, such uh, leaps and bounds that they have made with the stretch cluster functionality. And there's no other technology that I know of that is this easy to stand up and it just works uh, in a stretch cluster function. Uh, and now with the ability to lose not only one side of that stretch cluster, you can now lose basically two components of that, the witness node, and you can lose an entire site and the site that's still up and running, you can still have your workloads up and running as we can see here. So great new functionality. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed seeing uh, just a purposeful failure and disaster that we can um, test out the new functionality of the stretch cluster in vSAN 7.0 update three. Well, again, I'm Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Please hit subscribe. Like the video, share your comments uh, on stretch clusters or anything else uh, that is on your mind, and I will see you guys uh, down the road.